we set a goal, we think we're on the right track, but in the end, we realize that the path that we choose to get there isn't actually going to get us there. Often we feel frustrated and unproductive, like we haven't really done what we needed to do. And I'm sure that you too may have fallen into this trap. Well, hello friends. I'm Mary Beth with At What Cost, where simple living and deep faith go hand in hand. I'll go ahead and tell you the goal and kind of the trap that I fell into. But before we get to the solution, I need to tell you just a little bit of the context. So the goal that I had was really to have a regular quiet time routine. The trap I fell into is sort of a cart before the horse kind of issue. And I'll explain more on that in just a minute. Before we have our story time, here's a quick real life moment. <laughs> I have a little video crasher and some laundry that needs to be folded and put away after I get done filming this video. But until then, let's have a little story time. So as I mentioned, I wanted to have some type of quiet time routine. Now having three little kids in the house is not always conducive to, well, quiet, especially when those three children are boys. <laughs> And so because my husband would get up early for work, I started this habit of kind of getting up with him, which was actually quite early, but I saw it as an opportunity for that uninterrupted quiet time. Unfortunately, the same thing happened pretty much every day. My husband would get up for work. He would start getting ready. I would head downstairs. I'd head to the kitchen only to be greeted with a sink full of dirty dishes that I had not felt like doing the night before and a coffee pot that also needed to be washed because I didn't wash it the night before either. But when you're up at 4.30 in the morning to get your quiet time and your morning routine started, one tends to need a caffeinated beverage. So I would go to the sink and all the while, I'm while I'm cleaning my coffee pot, I'm thinking about the list of things that needs to get done that day. The kids need snacks, they need lunches, they need water bottles, and all these dirty dishes need to be done. I've got stuff that needs to be dealt with, like papers and just stuff all over my kitchen that needed to be done. So I would go ahead, wash the coffee pot, and while it was brewing, oh. I... I'm so, so, I'm so terribly sorry. <sighs> Am I interrupting your quiet time? As the coffee was brewing, I would get together any snacks, the lunches, I'd go ahead and get that out of the way so that I wouldn't have to worry about doing any of that. After all, I was waiting for the coffee, I might as well do it while I'm standing here. Then I would decide to unload the dishwasher so that I could have my clean favorite coffee cup. The list would go on and on of things that I would just quickly handle. You know, just I'll just do it a second while I'm here and then I'll get to my quiet time. And oftentimes what happened is I would either make so much noise that the kids would wake up or I would run out of time and it would be time for the kids to get up and get their day started. Now I can already sense that some of you are getting ready to type into the comments if you haven't already. Why didn't you just do all of that stuff the night before? Or better yet, why didn't you set a timer on your coffee pot so that the coffee would be done by the time you got down there? Well, friends, I would tell you that I did think about a lot of those things, but the fact of the matter was my life was so overwhelming and chaotic. Oftentimes those chores were foregone because I was so overwhelmed and exhausted by the task that I just didn't want to do it. I didn't feel like I had it in me. My cup felt like I had been pouring it out all day long and there was just nothing left to give, which is really what prompted my desire for quiet time. You know, it was very clear that I couldn't continue to pour from an empty cup and the best way that I could refill that cup was through God's word. But things were not going well for me. I had all these tasks, they were undone, I was feeling unproductive, but I wanted to have that quiet time and ultimately I ended up feeling unproductive there too. It seems a little bit like an impossible situation. I think there are two concepts that are really useful in helping kind of calibrate our mindset when it comes to the tasks ahead of us. 
some of this school of thought kind of comes from a book, The Tyranny of the Urgent. I can put a link to that in the description below, but it talks about the difference between the urgent and the important. Now, some of the tasks that we have are very urgent. They need our attention right now. Others are urgent and important. Some are important, but not urgent. And so we get this jumbling of tasks with priorities and urgencies and importance. And it can be difficult to figure out how we balance all of those things out, especially when many of them claim to be important, whether they are or not and claim to be urgent whether they are or not. This is the trap that we fall into. We can think that in order for us to develop this new routine, we have to start with somewhat of a clean slate. The problem ends up being that we can't always get to a clean state kind of mindset because things are just too overwhelming. So we put things off that could be really helpful and get trapped into doing things that don't necessarily have a long-term impact. So how do we balance the urgent and the important? Well, buckle up friends, because we're about to talk about Jesus. Jesus practiced this balancing act quite a bit during his ministry. If you recall to his earthly ministry, Jesus had many urgent and many important things to do. In fact, there seemed to be a never ending list of them. But Jesus had a very specific mission. He knew when it was time to move on and go to the next thing, even if the work seemed to be left undone. This is a luxury we don't always afford to ourselves. Sometimes if we don't finish the task, we feel unproductive, even if we have accomplished other things during the day. Other times, we may accomplish very few tasks, but still feel unproductive because we haven't gotten that much done during the day. But Jesus knew that every day counted and he made every day count, even if it meant leaving some of the tasks before him unfinished because it wasn't really in accordance with God's will and his plan. So for example, when Jesus would go into a town and begin healing people, he often left long before the long lines of people were healed. This was much to his disciples' chagrin. They were frequently found to be trying to draw him back to an area to serve the people right then and there, but Jesus would frequently rebuke them and remind them that that's not all he was here for. There was more work to accomplish and the seeds that he had planted in his work would continue to grow. Now at this point, you may be asking yourself, so Mary Beth, are you really telling me to just leave my chores and go study my Bible and leave all of that stuff undone and somehow it will magically become done? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. But I am saying that it is okay for you to delay some of those things or only do a portion of them so that you can devote more time to things that are going to have a long-term impact. Now, I'm not going to say that understanding which tasks are urgent and which are important, which ones we can kind of slide off for just a little while so that we can get that good, solid, quiet time is easy it's hard. They all seem to be important. They all seem to be urgent. We want to be good stewards of our time. We have to approach this decision with prayer and trusting that the Holy Spirit is going to guide us in this discernment. When I came to terms with the fact that often my day was starting without me, and it had a lot to do with my own choice, I felt really convicted to get things kind of under wraps. But it doesn't always happen in the way that we think it will. When I talked about going back to a clean slate, I often felt too overwhelmed to completely clean my kitchen the night before and ultimately had to stay up late doing it, which meant that getting up earlier just didn't feel possible. So there were many mornings that I just didn't worry about the dishes. I would go in, I would wash the coffee pot, or oftentimes I would make that the priority to wash my coffee pot and get it ready for the next morning. And I would pour myself a cup of coffee. 
I'd go into the other room and sometimes I would even have to sit with my back towards the kitchen so that I could not see it. I committed a small amount of time to doing Bible study without thinking about the kitchen and running through the checklist and worrying about that because after all, I was only going to devote a small time, like less than 30 minutes. That would still give me enough time to do some of that prep work for the kids and get things together for them to get ready for school. And in that time of refilling my cup through God's word, something happened. I began to feel a little more refreshed, renewed even. And even though the tasks didn't change, the dishes were still dirty, the stuff still had to be prepared for lunches and all of those things, the way that I felt when I approached them certainly felt different. I felt less overwhelmed and like I could really take this on and not completely come unglued by the time that my children woke up. Because I had this sense of being renewed, I started to kind of hold on a little more loosely to some of those chores. I quite frankly had more bandwidth to help engage my children in completing some of those things either in the evening or that morning. They started being able to help with packing their lunches and their snacks. I was more engaged with them and relaxed and so it became a meaningful time for all of us. Knowing when to balance the urgent and the important didn't make any of the tasks easier. They still were what they were, tasks that had to be done. What changed was the way I felt about having to do them. In our next video, we're going to talk more about my quiet time routine, how I found it to be beneficial in decluttering and staying motivated to do that. And if you want to get a jump start on decluttering, you can click the link right up here. There's a whole playlist that takes you room by room as we declutter our home. Thanks for watching and until I see you again, keep fighting the good fight.